Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday morning of online worship with Woodmont United Church of Christ. I'm here coming to you from my kitchen, as always, for what we call our welcome coffee. It's a time to gather together for our service wherever and whenever you're making your way online. And uh, we welcome you to the digital doors of our online sanctuary. Now today, I have on my Star Wars apron. I've got my oven mitt because today is World Communion Sunday. And it is a chance to recognize and remember that we are part of a worldwide community of Christians everywhere. And yet, while we have so much that divides us in our lives, when we all come to the table, to the communion table, to Christ's table, all are equal, all are one, no one is placed above anyone else, and everyone is welcome to the same thing. And so while you're going and getting your juice for communion later on and getting bread of some sort, I think my bread is just about ready, so I'm going to take it out if you don't mind. Oh yeah, here we go. A nice loaf of challah bread for later on. Now, I'm sure I'm not fooling anybody. I don't know the first thing about baking bread, but I'm awfully good at buying it, so here we are. So again, as you're gathering your things for communion later on today, I just want to say a quick word about communion. When I think about the division and the animosity that we have amongst so many of us in our country right now, I look back to the communion table when Christ met with his followers that last supper, and I ask who was Christ willing to break bread with? Yes, it was his closest friends and companions, but he also broke bread with someone who he knew would betray him and give him up that night. And so as you live out your life in this communion table of ours, who is it that you need to make room for at the table, who you might hold a grudge against, hold animosity toward, who you might feel like you can't trust right now? Who can you allow a space for, just as Jesus did, no matter how tough that may be. Having said all that, let's go on to Bruce to kick us off with today's opening praise music. <laughs> good morning, yes Lord, good morning, yes Lord, good Good morning. Yes, Lord, it's bring me to bring the dawn. 
kiss the blood government. Which is a beautiful thing to feel. To feel our hearts beat in our chest. And to hear the beautiful sound of the silence. How silent and how beautiful the dawning of the age. How silent and how beautiful the turning of each page. Your blessings are eternal in the quiet of my heart. How silent and how beautiful. No. How great thou art How silent and how beautiful The coming of the dawn The magic of simplicity And the wonders of your song These moments of your stillness Are setting me apart How silent and how beautiful to know how great thou art. I'm restless and I'm weary. Please don't let me go. How silent and how beautiful the footsteps that you bring. Soft upon the holy ground Within me echoing You are walking in the stillness That is cradled in my heart How silent and how beautiful And oh, how great thou art I'm restless and I I give to you my heart How silent and how beautiful Oh, how great thou art Oh, how great thou art in our opening praise music for our online worship each Sunday often begins with a piece called Good Morning. Yes, Lord, we all say. And I say good morning as always. My name is Kim Cartwright. I am the interim pastor at the Woodmont United Church of Christ in Milford, Connecticut. We offer a very warm welcome to all who join us for online worship each morning. Psalm 118, verse 24 in the Bible celebrates that this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
Many of us have heard those words before. We observe the first Sunday of October to be World Communion Sunday. I find it wonderful to realize the fact that tens of thousands of Christian brothers and sisters around the world are coming to the Lord's table today to remember and to celebrate being among Jesus' disciples. It doesn't matter what part of the world we hail from, because from God's perspective there is no political, ethnic, cultural, or national boundary that should become an impenetrable wall that separates us from one another. God's message is that we are one people, people of God's promises and purposes, and called to be faithful disciples with grateful hearts. What we celebrate both in the present and in church history is that the first century church came to understand that Christ's uh, Christ, um, church stands for the extravagant inclusion of all God's children. So come and be included, and we will give thanks together that by faith we are all welcomed and included in a vast fellowship of faith friends in Christ. And so let us worship with grateful hearts that God's love has found us. Amen. Let us worship God together. Throughout the world today, congregations celebrate World Communion Sunday, gathering as one around the sacred table of Christ's remembrance and presence. Our sisters and brothers in Africa, Europe, Central and South America, Asia, and in all lands and countries join with us in lifting the bread of life and the cup of salvation. In Christ, there is no East, no West, no north, no south, just one spirit revealing hope, love, and peace for all. O Holy One, unseen but always present, invisible yet all-powerful, bless, we pray, all who gather at your sacred table today. As we affirm our commitments to serve in Jesus' name, strengthen our faith to accept the cost and joy of discipleship. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. Bless our gathering today, dear God, as we turn from things that distract us from running the good race you set before us. We seek to listen to, learn from, pray, and give thanks for your transforming presence and guidance. Thank you for today's blessings as we worship and pray in the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Amen. Grateful for the grace of God in our lives, that there is someone, some power that can lift us when we fall. It doesn't all depend upon us. In fact, it depends upon the grace of God, the unconditional love, which is a gift freely given. May we freely receive it as we pray the prayer of confession. Let us pray together. O God, o God of grace, grace. We long for harmony in our relationships, serenity in the midst of problems, and community that expresses your Spirit's presence. We confess we are often anxious about life rather than trusting your wisdom. When we fail to give kindness to others, are too quick to take offense, or allow differences to divide us, Forgive and heal us, we pray. Inspire also the hearts and decisions of world leaders in these challenging times, as their choices profoundly affect us all and the future of today's youth. Rule in our hearts 
our homes and world, and guide us all in your pathways through the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Penitence is a fancy word that describes when we are genuinely sad, sorrowful or regretful, when we see the light and recognize the ways we have distanced ourselves from the will of God, unintentionally or intentionally. Repentance is the sincere desire to change when we really mean it, to mend broken relationships, to go to people we have hurt, to say we are sorry and to ask their forgiveness, and to restore a faithful relationship with God. And it is so wonderful, so freeing, when we find the courage to do those things. Praise be to God, the joy of accepting God's gift of forgiveness and the forgiveness of others are among the greatest gifts anyone can give or receive. Praise and gratitude to God for God's amazing grace. And may you and I be frequent givers of that grace to others, even when it is difficult to do so. Amen. Good morning. I'm here with your mission moment for October, which is Neighbors in Need. This is a collection, a special offering that the UCC holds in October for to support the ministries of justice and compassion through the United States. A th one third of the offering is given to the Amer Council for American Indian Ministries and two thirds go to the UCC's Justice and Witness Ministries to support a variety of justice initi initiatives, advocacy projects, and direct service projects through grants. These grants are given to neighborhood churches who apply with specific either direct service or justice initiatives that they are doing in their communities. Um, this year, um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the elected officers of the UCC determined that the highest priority for churches was to offer relief where possible. So they gathered money from a variety of sources, including neighbors in need, and formed a COVID-19 relief fund. So monies that you donate to, to this fund are used in a variety of ways, wherever needed. So please um, be generous and send in your contributions. Uh, you can see it on the uh, website where to send it. You can actually donate through the website or you can send it yourself. We'll also be doing a collection of food for the food banks in October. That's our hands-on project and the bins are located outside the church. We will have the list of items that are sorely needed posted in next week's Woodmont Weekly. Thank you, have a good day. Dear Woodmont United Church of Christ, I'm Nina. And I'm Teresa. Thank you for coming on this journey with us as we begin our year long series addressing racism in this country. To kick off our first good trouble moment, We'd like to go to the source, John Lewis, a lifelong civil rights activist and congressman who says it best in the following clip from the documentary, Good Trouble. There will be a link below. He got into good trouble and tasked us to do the same. In, in honor, honor and, and in memory, memory of John, John Lewis, Lewis, let's get, get into, into good, good trouble. My philosophy is very simple. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just yeah. say something, yeah. do something, get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. He was always different than every member of Congress. Everybody knew what he had done. He was John Lewis. We're marching today to dramatize to the world that hundreds and thousands of Negro citizens denied the right to vote. Congressman Lewis gave us the blueprint to organize and to legislate. The reason why he's effective as a leader is because he's lived it. We made a decision to march in an orderly, peaceful, nonviolent fashion from Selma to Montgomery. You are ordered to disperse. This march will not continue. I was hit in the head 
My knees went from under me. I thought I was going to down the bridge. If John Lewis, as a 19, 20-year-old, wasn't doing what he did, I would not be here. We will march with the spirit of love and with the spirit of dignity that we have shown here today. The whole time he was in the movement, it was frightening, knowing the danger, knowing what could happen. You cannot replace a John Lewis. He's the most courageous person I ever met. Too many people struggled and died to make it possible for every American to exercise their right to vote. He challenges the conscience of the Congress. Bring common sense gun control legislation to the House floor. Forty years later, John Lewis continues to inspire us. Are you with me? Let me hear you. Three civil rights workers that were murdered for trying to help people get registered to vote are looking down on us. This is a time for action. That's what I learned from John Lewis. There are forces in America today who want to take us back, but we're not going back. We're going forward. song that I wrote, um, I think in 2010. It's about the prodigal's other son. <laughs> and you know the story. There was this older brother who worked very hard for his father. He did everything he was supposed to do. Worked in the fields when he was told he never complained. Never asked for so much as a twig. And he knew that half the inheritance was his. And then his younger brother said, I'm out of here. I'm tired of being working in this situation. And he asked for his half of the inheritance and he took it and he wandered off and he squandered it on loose living to say the least. And the elder brother thought, at least I'm through with that guy. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. The younger brother came back. And his father saw him in the distance. <gasps> My son! And he welcomed him with open arms and he killed the fatted calf. You know the story. But the elder brother was irritated. A little irritated. And this is his song. Why do you welcome him? Why do you treat him well? Why do you let him in our house? I hope he rots in hell. He's cost you everything. Take him about half of your own. Why do you? my hard work while you're looking right through me you welcome my brother the jerk ah. he's cost you everything take him down half of your own why do you welcome him and why do i feel alone your love on him will there be any to share you know he's cost you everything taking up half of your own why do you welcome him and why do i feel so alone To that, the father had compassion on his older son. He heard him. He heard him. And he sang him this song. Oh. 
Oh, my son, my son, and my daughters too. Your brother once was lost, now his life is new. Well, all we bring of any worth is the love we shed upon the earth. And all my love is yours to share, brothers, sisters, breathing the same air. family all brothers and sisters too oh so many so many of us are lost me too all we have of any is the love we bring upon the earth and all God's love is ours to share brothers sisters breathing the same air brothers sisters breathing the same air Sisters breathing the same air. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his field to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and he went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and he put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now is found. And they began to celebrate. May God bless these words to our understanding. When I was growing up, one of the most important times of the busy day was our time as family around the family table, where we would share a common meal and tell each other what we had done all day. In some families today, there's barely enough time for that with multiple things to do and places to go. One of our previous churches had a helping hands fund to assist both church members and others in meeting emergency needs. The Helping Hands Fund 
once provide emergency transportation home home for a runaway teenager who had no resources left in New ha in West Haven. I'm going to call her Ellie, though that was not her real name, of course. But Ellie was a very young teenager. Uh, for various reasons, in pain and anger and frustration, she had temporarily given up trying to be a part of her family. And so she moved into the family of someone else, lived in their home. When Ellie called our church, she had run out of personal resources, and she had worn out of her welcome in living with her neighbor's family. As I later learned from her mother, uh, three weeks of absence from the family table was a daily painful reminder to the whole of her family of the troubles they were all experiencing. Ellie called me as my name was still on the runaway youth, uh, the youth runaway uh, hotline. Uh, from years ago, I worked with runaways. My name was still there, so I received the call right here in West Haven. With the help of Family Service Agency in a nearby town, we were able to reunite the family. And I tell you this story to tell you a bit about how that reunion took place. It looked just like what you'd see in the movies or read in the Bible. When we stepped out of the car, the reunion was phenomenal. The father, the mother, the aunt, the grandmother literally ran out of the front door to embrace Ellie because the loss had been found, just like our reading from the Bible this morning has reminded us. Ellie was ready to be found, and so she was ready and able to accept the warm embrace of those who were so joyful that she had been found. And the family was also ready to work through the issues that precipitated their problems in the first place. Not only did the family embrace and welcome Ellie home, but they also invited myself and the social worker to join them at their family table. I, they just added two extra chairs. I wish it could always be a picture as perfect as that. It surely reminded me of the scripture Carol read this morning. Jesus' parable of the loving father who ran from his house to embrace and to welcome home his son who had been wandering away and living elsewhere, who had squandered his resources, who had been missing from the family table for quite some time. It also reminds me of the communion table around which we are invited, even though we are socially distanced these days, Spiritually, we are invited to be at that table with our common faith and in community with our faith friends. In the parable told by Jesus, the father greets his son and welcomes him back to the family table with an unconditional love that totally forgives and accepts him back, only caring that the lost has been found. Even the prodigal son's older brother Jealous of the attention his brother is receiving has a lesson to learn about forgiveness and the joy there is when a lost person is found. Today is World Communion Sunday, observed by Christians all over the world on the first Sunday of October each year. We are remembering, we're thinking of, and praying for the millions of Christian faith friends around this world who are sharing in the sacrament of communion and counting themselves to be among Jesus' disciples. We are all sharing a common meal together in remembrance of Jesus' expression of the love of God and in recognition of his spiritual presence that binds all Christians together as one. This common table around which the worldwide family of Christ repeatedly gathers, albeit in our homes and socially distanced during the COVID pandemic, this table set for the disciples of Jesus always has room for more people. Just as Ellie's family set out two more chairs for myself and for the social worker. 
There's always more room at the Lord's table for all who hear and receive with faith the loving invitation of Christ to join the fellowship that is there. This was powerfully brought home to me years ago in the writings of a friend who described with the following words the unexpected visit of a man at his church one Sunday morning. It goes like this. He came in out of the rain and slumped down on a pew near the rear door. The warmth of the sanctuary felt good to him. The music of the organ relaxed his body. The words of the music set his mind at rest. He dozed for a moment and was awakened by a man who held out a tray of bread before him, told him to eat a piece of it. The man offered him a cup and told him to drink of it. He spoke softly of the love of God for this stranger and to the stranger, and the stranger was heard to say, I didn't know that anyone really cared. There is one more thing I'd like to share that might surprise you at first because of the sound of it. It's simply this. There is an important key that you need to be a disciple of Jesus. A key, you say? And what would that be? Each of us in life confronts doors we want to open. Each of us hold in hand something like a bundle of keys. The keys may include the money we need to afford something, or an educational degree that opens the door to a job, or the track record of a good reputation that puts us in good standing for an interview, or years of practical experience that open up new opportunities. The doors in life we choose to walk through and the keys we use to open them are very important life choices. The world is filled with key vendors claiming to have the very keys we want and need the most. They say, here, here's the key to popularity. Here's the clothing that you need to wear. Here's the music. Here's the style. Here's the key to happiness, the key to dulling your pain. Here's your key to success. Here's the key to wisdom or the key to power or the key to health. Here's the diet. Here's the food. Here's the plan. In our choices of doors and keys, welcome then to the communion table of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is at this table that we seek in every way possible to commune with the one who holds the master key that unlocks all the doors in our lives that are worth opening. In following Christ, we are guided away from doors that are unfit for us to open and which lead to nowhere but trouble and disappointment and pain. Our accepting Christ's invitation to be in fellowship with others and with him at his table reminds us anew that God loves us enough to provide us with the master key that opens doors to an abundant life when we follow him and become servants to his mission in the wider world. And don't forget the wonderful image of Christ in the book of Revelations where he is said to have said, Listen, I am standing at the door of your life knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you. I will eat with you and you with me. You'll have fellowship. And now that's the door worth opening. And faith in that is the master key. Come expectantly to Christ's table today and be sure to bring your faith that opens the door to your heart. Your heart is the most important door that needs to be unlocked so Christ can enter in. Amen. Before we begin a time of extended prayer, may we spend a moment of silence and naming within our hearts those for whom we would offer special prayers today. Let us be in prayer. O 
O good and gracious God, be known to us today as we pray for faith and courage to walk with you in our words and in our deeds. We thank you for all who gather with us in this time of worship, in this home away from home, as we together seek your word and wisdom for the living of our days. May your Holy Spirit within and around us draw us into a faithful relationship with you and with our sisters and brothers with whom we seek to serve you. Speak to us in word, melody, and in the quiet moments that we may be renewed in our faith and strengthened in your service. Shine in the hearts of your people today. Where there is darkness, let there be your light. Bless those dear ones whom we have named before you in the quietness of our hearts today for your healing and reconciliation, for your comforting, your presence, and your love. Give strength to all who face difficult situations and let your compassionate light shine upon them, guiding their decisions and their steps forward. And we pray for our nation of people, and our world of nations and the leaders thereof, who are so divided about so many issues. We pray for the citizens of our nation and of our world of nations as they participate in decisions and actions and directions that affect the lives of so many more. May seeking your presence and wisdom be the prayer of many as we today and together find our way through periods of worry or fear, anxiety, and sometimes confusion, and leave our footprints in history. May your church be a beacon of light that brings hope and brightness and the message of your gospel truth and the power of an encouraging example of how people live, work, encourage, and support one another in one, in one another in ways that prosper everyone. For we pray in our Savior's name. Amen. This table is open to all who confess Jesus by faith as the Christ and seek to follow in Christ's way. Come, not to, this, come to the sacred table not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are fulfilled, but because you are empty and you stand in need of God's mercy and grace. Come not to express an opinion, but rather to seek a divine presence and to pray for the Spirit to fill your life. The Lord be with you. And also with with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them them to to the the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right right to give our thanks and praise. It is right that we should offer thanks, O God, because you have created the heavens and the earth. We give you thanks for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We thank you for all that sustains life, for all people of faith in every generation who have given of themselves to your will, and especially we give thanks for Jesus, whom you have sent from your own being to be our Savior. We praise you for his birth, his life, his teachings, and the profound meaning of his death and his resurrection, and for his being with us now, calling forth your church by the power and inspiration of your Holy Spirit to engage the world with your word and message. Gifted and uplifted by your presence with us, we praise you with the faithful of every time and place, joining with the choirs of angels and the whole of creation in this eternal hymn. Holy, 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 creator God God of power power and might, heaven and earth earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes comes in your name. Hosanna in the the highest. highest. We offer you thanks, O Creator, Savior, Giver of life, 
And we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us communion with our Lord. We recall how Jesus spoke to his disciples on the night of his betrayal, and as they were eating, he took bread. He blessed it, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, for this is my body, broken for you and for many. Let us feed upon this by faith and with thanksgiving. And in like fashion, after they had eaten, he took the cup, and he said this, is the cup of my blood shed for you and for many, the new covenant unto the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink from this cup in remembrance of me. By partaking this bread and this cup, we proclaim Christ's death, we celebrate Christ's resurrection, and we await God's King, uh, Christ's coming again in the fullness of God's time and plan. And we join together in the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you and for me. Take, eat, feed upon this, by faith and with thanksgiving. like fashion, this cup, the New Testament, the New Covenant, in the blood of Christ, shed for you and for me and for many unto the remission of our sins. Take, drink with thankful hearts. Please let us be together in fellowship as we pray the prayer of thanksgiving. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world bearing gifts of courage and peace. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. During these announcements, I want to share with you an interesting milestone I realized. It seems today's service is our 30th online worship service in a row that we've conducted since this pandemic began. Now, obviously, the circumstances in which this all came about is nothing worth celebrating but I do want to celebrate and recognize the resilience that all of you have shown during this time. And I'm so happy that you continue to worship each week with us and that no matter where we are, we are worshiping together as one united church family. You know, I, I think that's kind of what faith is, right? It's taking a step into the darkness, not knowing what's ahead of you, but trusting that God is leading you down the right path anyway. So keep on following that path, no matter how dark it is ahead of you. One of my favorite things that's come about during these services, though, is the photos and videos that people continue to share, that all of you continue to share. So uh, let's get right into it. Our first photo is from Ann Yost. This is a mariachi sculpture that she took a photograph of in Simsbury, Connecticut. 
This other photo from Art Yost is a sign that they've placed in their front yard saying, we believe, and what a bunch of powerful things it professes to believe. The last few weeks we've been setting up the new Good Trouble Moments that we're featuring for a year in our services. And today we had our very first Good Trouble Moment, a powerful introduction to the person and the leader that John Lewis was. And thank you to Teresa and Nina for helping us gain a little more insight into his story and his life. Now we're going to keep having these, so we want to know what you think. And next week is going to be a great time to let us know that. During coffee hour, we're going to have a little bit of a forum, so anybody can share what their thoughts are on this. Is this something that seems like a great idea? Is it something that doesn't seem like a good idea to you? Are you excited? Are you afraid? Are you angry? Whatever it is, we want to hear it so we can talk together as a church family and continue on this journey together and see what comes out of it. Also happening next week on Sunday, October 11th at 10.30 a.m., we are again holding an outdoor in-person worship service on the front lawn of our church. So if you'd like to come, bring a chair, bring a blanket, and uh, come listen to some powerful prayer, music, and a message for the day. And we hope you can make it for that. But also, if you can't, don't worry about it because we are going to have our service online as usual, same time, same place. So if we don't see you in person, I hope we'll see you right here. And if you have any questions about how this is all going to happen in person, you can hop on our website, woodmontucc.org, and there is a page for that that will explain all the procedures we're taking to keep everybody safe so they can worship together. One of my favorite traditions that started about three years ago is called the Blessing of the Trick-or-Treaters. The Sunday before Halloween, we always have any of our children and youth, or anyone really, who like to come dress to church in their Halloween costume so we can all gather around, do a laying on of hands, and say a prayer for everyone's safety as they go out trick-or-treating on Halloween night. Obviously, this year things are a little different, but we're going to do it digitally, so if you'd like, send in photos of yourselves, your family, your loved one, your friends, whoever you'd like, dressed up in their Halloween costume for this year. And whether you're going out trick-or-treating, whether you're staying home, whether you're going to a party, whatever it is you're doing, let's all gather and online and pray for one another's safety. So uh, you can send them to robsdeli at yahoo.com. I'll put a link below in the description to the video. And we hope to see all these great costumes as we pray for everyone's safety. Next, we have a video from Ann Yost uh, from the search committee. So enough from me. Let's hear it from Ann. Good morning, good morning. This is your last chance to read over our completed church profile. Today, Sunday, October 4th, will be the last Sunday that it will be posted on our webpage. You have gotten already a protected password via email. So please take this opportunity, your last opportunity, to read over what will be uh, representing our church to potential settled pastors. Uh, the search committee uh, worked on this week after week, and much of the material is based on the results of the survey, which um, you completed back in the fall. So I encourage you to um, give us some feedback, comments, questions, and we will certainly be glad to talk to you about anything that you would like regarding this. So take, take your time today and read it over, and thank you very much. Also a reminder, if you're looking to give to the church, you can hop on our website, click on the Giving tab, and pay safely and securely through PayPal. You can also give through check by writing it out to Woodmont United Church of Christ, 1000 New Haven Avenue, Milford, Connecticut, 06460. And if it's going toward a mission, write down in the memo line that this is for the mission for the month so we know exactly where those funds are meant to go. And last, if you are in any need of financial assistance at this time, if you are in need of supplies at this time, we have the Deacons Fund and our care coordinator set up to help you. So please reach out to us and we will do whatever we can. And now, let's go on to Bruce for today's hymn. Join me now for hymn number 394, In Christ There Is No East or West. This hymn is an African-American melody and it was composed by a gentleman named Harry Burlaw in 
And it says 1939 was the arrangement, but it was composed in 1892. Uh, he, uh, uh, extraordinary. So it fits our times of racial tension. In Christ there is no east or west, in Christ no south or north, but in one community of love throughout the whole wide earth. In Christ so true hearts everywhere their high communion find, that in service is the golden cord close bind in humankind. Oh, in Christ there is no Jew nor Greek, in Christ nor slave nor free, for men and women live in God, and all are kin to me. In Christ now beat both east and west, in Christ meet south and north, a joyous true community throughout the whole wide earth. I'm into that. I love the words of the traditional Irish blessing, and I share these words with you once again. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. And may the rain fall gently upon your, upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of God's hand as we walk knowing the grace of Almighty God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit our life together as faith friends. Amen. Amen. Amen.
The father had compassion on his older son. He heard him. He heard him. And he sang him this song. Oh, my son, my son, and my daughters too. Your brother once was lost. Now his life is new. Well, all we bring of any worth is the love we shed upon the earth. And all my love is yours to share. Brothers, sisters, breathing the same air. Brothers and sisters, too. Oh, so many, so many of us are lost. Me, too. All we have of any worth is the love we bring up. God's love is ours to share, brothers, sisters, breathing the same air, brothers, sisters, breathing the same air, brothers, sisters, breathing the same air. 